So again, we've talked about this idea of deep state politics and human engineering in the 21st century. We're going to continue talking about it everywhere from the singularity to Foucault's master race. And I want to introduce another biopolitical thinker whose name is Giorgio Agamben. And I want to just do a little brush of him and see how he at this moment is relating to deep state biopolitics and human engineering in the 21st century. Um, Giorgio Agamben, Agamben was born in 1942. He's an Italian philosopher, and he's going to work with and to some extent uh, reformulate some of Foucault's ideas. Um, one of his fundamental ideas was from his book written in 1998 called Homer Sekar. Um, he's got a number of other works I'll refer to from time to time, but I want to go into those. And Agamben's idea here is that there is a hidden foundation of sovereignty. I pulled together a few of Foucault's ideas and he's suggesting the same idea and I will in part suggest they're both speaking about deep state phenomenon in the most fundamental ways possible. Agamben actually speaks of a hidden matrix of power and by the way he speaks Greek and German and French and brilliant man and both classical and modern. So he, if you see him in interviews, he generally speaks in English and he's actually quite accessible and his works are also available in English and um, in PDF forms. So he's speaking of a hidden matrix of power, Agamben, a complex concept, and he's really going to cut to it in Homer Sekar, his work into the idea of the state of exception the state of exception. You might remember we talked about in the history of realism and its connection to deep state politics. There's a moment uh, when we can really tell who's the true sovereign, and that has to do with this state of exception inside of the government. But the separation of bare life is that moment when we see at the state of exception. Remember, if you want to go back and look at Carl Schmitt, for example, um, Nazi theorist, and he's using a great deal of his ideas to kind of look at the state within the state, the security state, the parallel state, and kind of get a sense for where power is in the direction um, it's taking its subjects. And he's looking at this idea of bare life. And the idea that true sovereign really has control over the actual bare life, which is a slightly philosophical concept, but I'll, I'll, I'll move forward. Homer Sekar, the idea is from Roman law, it's a person who is banned and may be killed by anybody without the killer being regarded as a murderer, but he may not be sacrificed. philosophical concepts that play on this uh, as well. But let me just read a little bit about and from Agamben so you get an idea of where we're at. But the short end of this for Agamben, the form of democracy that is around the world today was by design created as its natural outcome uh, to be totalitarianism. 
Okay, so um, it's a brilliant mind, but I'm concerned how he plays into our concept of the deep state, secrets of empire as revealed by Foucault, the creation of a master race, and the end game, which is this singularity that involves the actual uh, master sure. servant. So uh, Agamben wants to expand upon the totalitarian na nature of this democratic regime and why biopolitics fundamentally concerns the state of exception, which for, for uh, Agamben now is the hallmark of totalitarianism in modern democratic states. He assert, his assertion begins with a political question, who decides, and this is as Foucault was discussing, who decides, who truly decides who can live and who can die? He notes that in any historical period, the sovereign is the one that gets to decide. You know, who is the sovereign? This is the question, the visible state or the deep state? And we're trying to figure out something. It might have to do with our own very destiny. And, and Agamben's getting to this here. However, after the Declaration of Independence, remember how Foucault talked about an inversion of power, so secrets of empire sort of hidden and power, real power no longer shows its face as it did in the medieval and Renaissance times. However, after the Declaration of Independence, sovereignty was shattered into a million pieces, says Agamben. And among its constituencies of power, every man became equal, making all objects equal subjects. Kind of a heavy idea, but shattered, all objects equal subjects. The right over life and death then became a collective responsibility. There is where Biology enters the picture here. Biology, and this is right around the 19th century, and we're talking about evolution and the concept going into people's minds of Darwinism and this sort of alchemical tradition, the idea of humans imposing themselves into this evolutionary process that's taking place here. According to Agamben, biology, which is just rising up as a discipline in um, scholarship, biology signals the emergence of modernity and a totalitarian ideology. And it does so because one, it reduces people to their animal qualities. It bestializes man. And two, it introduces the idea of the norm and the world we live in psychologically, what, what's normal, okay? The idea of the norm, hence the abnormal, the fascination with abnormal psychology and henceforth the state of the human condition. Biology, by measuring life, reduces people to objects, says Agamben. Bare life, zoe or zoe, Z-O-E. In the modern nation state, the subject is defined as an object within the system, bare life with political rights. The nation then defines itself by its population rather than its territory. The state now has a stake in its population and maintains its identity by preserving the physical health bare life of its citizens. And yes, this is deep and philosophical, but it's sort of like what seems to be the mother state, wondering what you can drink and drive, and how fast you can drive and when you're trans fats and on and on, because it's so concerned about what's normal with your body and being. There's an elusive and hidden agenda behind all that, says Foucault and Agamben. So Agamben continues, biopolitics is a type of securitization political control over bare life, which necessarily means political control over death. The state seeking to purge the abnormal. We can think of everything from the communist project to the Nazi project, both working under differing, and I will get into this biopolitical narratives, but essentially uh, part of the same great path and great work, can remove its citizens. The state seeking to purge the abnormal from its body. Again, the metaphor 
of you know the body or the body politics and has a cancer who is the sovereign that decides what's normal what needs to be removed what's going to be a procedure you know getting down to how we think and dress and act and this world system is enclosing as agamben predicts each and every day with uh, political correctness and the rolling out of the police state and the increased censorship that we see around us each day. Um, so the sovereign then gets to decide what's abnormal and what can be removed, how we can remove citizenship and kill without committing a crime because you're getting rid of the cancer. So you're killing it, but it had to be done for the good of the body, the body of the political body, the body politique if you like. The device modern democracies use to reduce people to their bare life is the state of exception. And for, you know, Agamben, he's writing this in 1998, right before 9-11, and when, when the world sort of goes into a new state of exception, and obviously the security state then enters in and becomes right there as the real state. Uh, you'd have to be blind as a bat not to see that the parallel state is in fact the state after 9-11 and you know government is going to go <laughs> that's what i'm talking about that's what i've been talking about so um this is where the modern camp for Agamben enters the pictures. Examples include refugees, asylum seekers, the denial of voting right to prisoners, the death penalty, prisoners in Guantanamo Bay, and so many other people that are displaced by events each and every day, even including natural uh, disasters. So in fact, Agamben sees the modern nation state in now a permanent state of exception. Okay, so there is no security state, as Carl Schmidt would say, it's there in case the visible government gets bombed, you have this backup government. No, he said that's a state of exception that Nazi Germany had or the communist state was really perpetually built upon. But this is the state for modern democracies. It was designed so that its natural outcome would be this totalitarian conclusion that we have today that the modern state is the implementation of the state of exception and has become normal for modern states. We just, it's post 9-11 world, everything changed. Because biology makes the state focus on itself and its citizens as bare life. If one perceived a threat to its bare life, even if one of its, even if it's a citizen is expulsion abuse or execution can be legalized or justified. For Agamben, modern democracy has this inherent totalitarian control over life and death. Power over the totalitarian state makes it a totalitarian state. The power of life and death and within democracy. So, these are just a few biopolitical ideas. Um, they're hard to grab a little bit when you first hear about them, but they're powerful, powerful ideas that whether we call, um, call to task the visible or invisible government, the outcome that we have right now is a totalitarian government. And I think we're going to um, continue this, why some people see this so clearly and others do not. And I'm going to continue um, with the analogy of Plato's cave and the conspiracy of competition. Thank you for joining me, Dr. Deep State.